Okay. Now let's understand uh, how all of these access policies work together. All of these that you are seeing here, uh, they are all scattered right now. So we'll try to uh, align them all and uh, make things work in the ECI fabric. Now first we define the ports. Let's say for example that the port number 9 and 10 of our switch are having a same configuration for both of them. So in that case we can map a single interface profile for both the access ports and map both of them with the same interface policy group which is shown in the gray boxes. So now uh, we need to mention which switch these port profiles belong to. This can be done under the switch profile uh, where the switch selectors are mentioned uh, with, with the switch IDs where these interface profiles would be mapped. Combining the two we can see how port number 9 and 10 for a switch are configured and now they should be up and operational. Now what about the VLANs on the ports? We do not have the list of allowed VLANs on these ports yet. Under the interface policy group in our previous slides, when you would actually visit the ACI fabric, uh, there is an option to define or map an AAEP profile to it the attachable access entity profile what next we have a vlan pool which would be mentioned which would be mentioning the ncap blocks the ncap blocks i mean uh, the allowed range of uh, vlans that we would be giving a group of vlans which when which when this uh, group will be mapped to an interface so on that interface this range of VLANs would be allowed in simple words now we have a physical domain for the bare metal we are trying to connect to the fabric that is mapped with the AAEP the attachable access entity profile for that uh, bare metal and under the domain uh, are the mentioned the VLAN blocks that we were just talking about which are allowed for that particular domain. Now bringing all together now as you can see we have configured the ports for a particular switch here. Now an AAEP maps uh, it is mapped to the interface policy group the physical domain mapping with AEP bring, bring it, uh, brings with itself the allowed pool of VLANs. Till now we still don't have mapped the particular required VLAN for this access pool, uh, for this access port. We have just mentioned a pool of VLANs, one of which would actually be our operational one. Uh, what I'm trying to say is if, if there is a uh, server connecting to port number 9 of switch number 202 and this port number 9 is an access port, it will run only one VLAN. How would it understand that out of this VLAN pool, that from this pool of VLANs, which particular VLAN which particular VLAN would actually be running on these ports we haven't defined that yet we have just done a configuration that on these ports any one of these 10 VLANs are allowed okay now we'll see how actually this configuration is done now uh, going under the tenant uh, then further application profile and then further into the EPG 
we can map a domain with its epg and mention a static binding mentioning the static switch ports in the NCAP VLAN. Uh, when you would go under the EPG, there is an option named D domains. There you can uh, mention the domain that uh, with the name of bare metal which we created in our previous slides. And further below the domains option, there is a static binding option where you can uh, define the port which is the uh, node 202 and on node 202 the interface is 1 slash 10 that interface is used for EPG project ABM01 and it will be running VLAN 1310 under the access mode and when I say 1310 this will this will work fine because this domain here brave metal it has mapped a pool of VLAN which is a pool of 1300 to 1310 and 1310 is one of the VLANs from that pool so the logical configuration is also done now this is how EPG is defined where to put the VLAN from the pool and uh, the associated domains so here I am uh, combining all of them together we can say the upper half uh, let me draw it here so we can say like uh, till here right this all is the logical uh, the physical topology or the physical configuration of ACI and uh, just below this line this whole part this we can say it's the logical configuration of the ACI and using this complete configuration defining the domains the VLAN pools the ports and then mentioning the ports and domains under an EPG the complete configuration end-to-end -end works Now obviously not even Cisco would be perfect. <laughs> so uh, we have uh, very you know kind of ignorable limitations for the AEP and VLAN pool deployment. So the first one is uh, port could not be a part of uh, uh, I'm, I'm sorry uh, the one port can be a part of only one AEP. Like for example, what I'm trying to say is if for a leaf switch 202 and it is, and its interface 1 slash 1, only one AAEP can belong to that port. That is one limitation. The other mandate is to have a VLAN pool deployed. You cannot mention a single VLAN under the EPG only. There has to be a VLAN pool configured for a particular domain physical domain, VMM domain, L2 domain, L3 out domain, whatever. But we have to have a VLAN uh, pool mentioned and associated with the same AEP. Furthermore, we cannot have overlapping VLAN pools like we have two different VLAN pools or, or uh, like uh, uh, le let's say for example we have a VLAN pool of 125 and there is another VLAN pool of uh, 4 to 8 so on both these VLAN pools 4 and 5 have the overlapping pools we cannot use these two pools with the same AEP a particular VLAN only comes uh, becomes operational on a port when it is defined under the EPG as the static binding or VMM events until or unless you do not define VLANs under EPG doing the physical configuration is not going to help so that's it for now uh, in our next sections we'll understand uh, more details about all the types of VLANs we have in the ACI fabric.